Here we are at Caribbean Club. This guy's gonna hook us up with a little bit of air on the bike. It's a little low. I'm gonna skate. Wear these freaking fishing shoes because that's all I have. Left the boat there. Bring it a ramp over here, Caribbean Club, which is pretty much non-existent ramp, but it gets the job done. So see you on the return. So the boat's backed up finally. I couldn't film as I was installing. It was too tight in there inside the uh, front hatch. So I'm gonna just walk you through all the installation steps and how we did it, what tools were used. I'm gonna go and get the Rodan right now. The trolling motor mounted up so I can show you guys what it looks like. Hey, babe. There's the uh, Rodan. Sorry, guys, it's kind of dark in here. Let's set the camera just. This is a Rodan. HD GPS anchor 36 volt so it is a three battery system uh, the plugs not installed yet so uh, but we'll go through some of those things in the next video see you both side I'll walk you through how you install this in case you're wondering how to install a trolling motor just like this and uh, show you what other parts of the installation needed to happen in order for me to mount this on that particular boat which is a Mako 171 so let me grab this and we'll get over there okay so taking you here on the bow i had to rem we remove the light actually to mount this puck remove some rope guides we had in the front fill them in with some marine tech i had to assemble a piece of starboard and remove a through haul cleat that i had here in the front that was run down to the stringers it's too heavy it's to lift this boat and this boat's only 17 feet so it's not really needed i installed a pop-up cleat flush mount to, you know so that when you fish on the deck it's safe the last thing that went on was the puck now to mount the puck you have to lay the trolling motor out on top of the boat make sure it lines up back there to the gunnel where you see that ram mount so that it's not hanging outside the boat or too far inside and then also you have to deploy the motor make sure it's lined up and then at least it's about an inch off of the rub rail uh, that wraps around the boat so uh, i i think I, I set it up about two and a half inches off and we'll get that mounted up right now so that you can see what it looks like also i did run a plug right here from marinko connector here this is the uh female uh, a trolling motor um, is going to have the male plug installed and all of it is going to be housed underneath the bow and I'll show you that when we get up there. Just press it right here. For now, hold it there. So the puck has a bracket, pretty much like all of them do. And then the bottom of the trolling motor has a recessed area and it literally rests right on there like so. Make sure the holes are lined up properly and the controlling, there it goes, slides right in and it is secure. You all have to put it underneath this right here, which kind of secures it. You can run a lock, a small padlock through it. I'll zoom in on that so you can see that comes on the actual trolling motor itself. You can actually buy these replacements. They do get damaged quite often. So you, they're supposed to fall right over this bar. And then you can run a small, you know, master padlock, something stainless so it doesn't rock, guys, preferably, you know, rust, sorry. And uh, there it goes. We're gonna now flip it. Let's get on the boat so we can show you that. Ellie's on the boat now. And we're gonna use the lever just to push down on it and deploy the motor out. You see how it drops down? goes all the way down please make sure that when you're installing you make sure that you adjust the neck here accordingly so that the head doesn't slam into the trailer causing it to get damaged 
um, but you see the clearance here I have about two inches two and an eighth more or less two and a quarter maybe it gives me plenty of room so that there's wiggle room there there's quite a lot of thrust and what you don't want is the motor to slam into the bow of the boat so it's fairly simple guys and this is a 72 inch shaft it was made for a large offshore bo offshore boat but we're not going to remove that because it kind of limits our possibilities in case we want to install it later on on an offshore boat and duplicate the setup which is more likely what we'll be doing in the future so it's going to stay that way and we're going to put it up on the ram mount i'm going to slide the camera back here so you guys can see this install the simple ram mount here that um, has a head on the top of the trolling motor head itself the gps head and this just makes sure that the head won't get damaged so we're going to bring that down and show you how we did that so you can see it's resting right up here you just want to loosen this a bit drops in and you tighten this up it's kind of hard for you to see there but you got the idea ram mounts there gps is here it just barely pushes over the side i like to give it a little bit of pressure just to keep it a little firmer you can always push the ram mount a little bit out to the left and tighten it down and it'll hold it further out for you this is a, a fiberglass shaft so it'll hold some of that flex and won't snap okay these is, this is a Rodan, they're manufactured here in Florida, a great company. The next thing we'll show you is uh, the installation underneath the bow for some of the parts that were used to mount it. So I'm going to get up on the back of the boat, climb up there. Because this boat doesn't have a lot of through hole access, we're going to install the batteries down in here on the hatch. But there you can see the through cleat and the screws for the puck and the starboard all of it was installed with stainless steel hardware and sealed off with some 5200 All right, so we're back on the lift dock side. We just tested the hardware and the installation of the trolling motor, the Rodan 36 volt GPS anchor. It held up pretty well. Now I'm gonna walk you through some of that hardware installation, which you saw earlier, and then show you the electrical installation. I uh, hardwired three Optima Group 34M AGM deep cycle batteries with a uh, breaker and a noco uh, three banks charger and we'll go over that now step by step so i decided to bow mount these batteries first because i don't have a lot of space in the center console and there's not a lot of through hole space in this boat also it offsets the weight nicely so the boat self bails a little better now so basically the first step was the electrical installation was to wire up the plug now if you see that there the plugs up in the front I ran some 6 gauge all the way through here, secured it to the top of the deck and then installed a 60 amp breaker which then was wired directly to the positive side of the last battery. This is the third battery in the series. Same thing goes for the negative lead, all stainless steel hardware with tie wraps that have uh, a hole to run a screw through. That applies to all of them up there and then here to the negative side. I grouped the batteries in series after that. These are Optimas D34Ms. I went with the 34M because again I don't have a lot of space in here guys. I couldn't fit group 31 or 27 batteries. The grouping is simple. You have positive to negative to the second battery that's 24 volts and then positive to negative on the third battery and that's 36 volts. Created a small little bracket on the back side and on the sides out of some starboard. You may see some back here. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. And then the final step in the process 
was to wire up the NOCO charger. That is a Gen 5 X3 Genus and basically you wire every single lead to the terminals negative and positive negative and positive and then the last one negative and positive you set this to the uh, 12 volt AGM as these are AGM batteries which are better a little bit more shock resistant and then I coiled everything up nice nicely with some tie wraps and the final step was to install a NOCO charging port right here on the wall itself through the inside of the hatch out by the gunnel area on the outside so this allows me to charge and I'll show you the power on and how uh, how it actually looks when it's connected a tip when installing batteries and grouping them together like this and bridging them together to form either a 24 or a 36 volt system make sure that you have the batteries facing in the same orientation meaning all the negatives align and all the positives if you know what you're doing you may be able to push them up and turn them sideways depending on the considerations of space for each vessel that may differ you may have to separate them in different compartments but this for me is a good visual guide or aid I could say so that these are not confused negative positive to negative positive to negative I like to keep these caps on here it helps a little bit with corrosion and also gives me a good visual aid as well to make sure that I'm not connecting anything where I don't or shouldn't be connecting it to so keep that in mind when you're doing an installation like this on your vessel so I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. you see this has a nice little rubber seal here little cap so it, it gets stays water free just pop that open and connect your extension cord there it goes you go in here you'll see that it'll automatically sense that there's power you could cycle through this you know if you want lithium or that will shut that channel off specifically or that bank off you go to regular 12 volt and AGM which is what they're all set to it'll immediately sense the batteries and start to charge them if they're empty right now it's just measuring the actual electrical charge on them I did also neglect to mention the strap I got a uh, footman's uh, two-point uh, tie down point there and ran a one inch blue strap all the way down to group these together and you can see they're fairly tight you don't want these jumping around because they can actually pop the lids off the top of the battery plus it just makes everything safer with an electrical installation and as you see look all batteries have let them charge overnight and they're full already we're gonna go through the installation of the uh, plug itself but uh, now I'm gonna power it up for you the entire unit so when you come up to the deck here I trimmed the excess off of the trolling motor cord got it down to about 18 almost 24 inches it gives you a recommendation that you leave about 6 to 12 inches of slack which is what I did and basically it just curls over and you install it it's very you, it can the plug can only go in one way sorry this is it's got to go all the way in there and pretty much self indexes and there it goes just connected the motors on or sensing that it's has electricity should always disconnect this if you're powering up the motor that way the power banks charger does not get affected and that's it I'm gonna deploy the unit and you can see some of the functions that it has I mean we're not I'm not gonna do it in the water right now but you'll you'll get a sense of how that works I also had to remove my cleat up front and install this uh, AFCO pop-up cleat flush mount it you know just pushed it a little back there was also concerns in the front I had to remove some rope guides but some of your boats won't have that so that's no big deal uh, the concern is with the light in the front that the green side won't shine through but at night it's print it's plenty bright so you can actually see it coming on that side of the boat no problem it's a pretty fairly simple installation and very clean and basically you just want to step down on the lever that freed it you have to free it from back there 
which I'll do now. And we'll drop the trolling motor and you'll see how that works. All right, so I've, I've gone ahead and deployed it, just removed it from the ram mount and there it is standing up. This is a fairly tall unit, it's a 72 inch, very big. It wasn't really designed for such a small boat, but because I will probably want to install it on another boat, my idea is to duplicate this installation and that way I can switch it from one boat to the other, an offshore boat, something like that in the future. Trolling motor itself uh, has a little lock here so you can regulate the depth where you want the motor head to sit, right? It is uh, remote controlled. This is the GPS head and I'm going to go ahead and activate the motor for you so you can see it doing its thing when it anchors or moves forward and all of the different speeds. All right, so I went hands-free just to show you uh, the operation. This is a remote. You have your directional controls, so you got forward, back, right, left. That's all numbered one, two, three, and four. You have a manual mode and anchor mode, which is the anchor used in place, which is uh, actually what I plan to use it the most for. And then a track. So the track allows you to point the trolling motor in a certain direction and then hit the track button and it'll keep the speed. And you can modify with it as you go, but it'll basically set on, set yourself on a course and it'll take you that way you can even map it out if you'd like to with the gps so i'm hanging off the side of the boat i'm going to show the operation of the motor here it is i'm going to take it down to about that's 10 clicks we'll do another 10. there we go we're at 20 now and then we'll try to cap it out and show it for top speed. So it is 33, the top speed. And you'll hear it beep out, there it goes. Just gave me an acknowledge that it's at top speed. So I'm gonna shut it down. There you go, she's off now. I gave it a space of a little bit over actually like two inches from the front of the boat. It recommends one, I went a little bit over since I've plan to fish in high current I don't want it slamming up on the boat itself so the unit has a LED indicator there there's three of them which is pretty awesome because yesterday I was out fishing and uh, used it for about a couple of hours and it still was on full power and the batteries were only three quarters of the way so really good on Rodan for making it very efficient I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to stow this unit here that operates this system here I'll go back on the harness and show you guys what that looks like. It's pretty simple, but it still is uh, noteworthy because storage is proper storage anyways, or proper stowing of the trolling motor is important. That way you don't damage it. So let's go back on the harness and do that right now. Now to stow the unit, you want to depress on this and then bring the trolling motor up. This is a little heavy guy, so you need, you need to actually practice with it, bring it down and over. Once you're up here, you can use your hand just to make sure that cradle's in correctly and it'll snap up in place positively, indicating that it is locked up. Give it a good tug, make sure it's locked in. Now, if you'll walk with me here to the side of the gunnel over here, I just lift this, adjust the ram out where I want it, which is usually right here to keep a little bit of tension on the rod. It's not going to bend it and then I tighten it down and that holds her in place. There you go. Alright fam, that concludes the installation of this Rodan trolling motor unit. I'll put the description of the trolling motor unit and everything I used below. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe, hit that like button. I'll see you in the next video. Tight lines everybody.